Welcome to the Couch GM Podcast. Today I have on Mariners relief pitcher Justin Topa, whose story is truly inspiring. He's had to go through a ton of adversity to get up to this point in his career, having to deal with multiple reconstructive surgeries on his throwing elbow, being dropped by a couple teams early on in his career, having to play indie ball for an entire season before getting his first shot at big league experience. And now this past year in 2023, Justin Topa was the most valuable relief pitcher on the Mariners team via baseball references 1.6 wins above replacement. Justin pitched in 75 games this year, nearly half the amount the team played in all year and over 69 innings pitched he logged a 2.61 era a 1.145 whip logged 61 strikeouts had an eight strikeouts per nine and a 2.3 walks per nine he also logged three saves to go along with 23 holds he was one of the high leverage guys for the mariners this year he pitched in 24 games in the seventh inning 39 games in the eighth inning seven games in the ninth inning and eight games in extra innings again this is a truly inspiring story so i'm excited to help share it and if you'd like to support the Couch GM brand, make sure to like and subscribe on YouTube and give this video a share with the baseball fan. And if you're thinking of buying, selling, or refinancing a residential property in 2024, reach out to the Couch GM, myself, Connor Webb. You can visit lenderconnorwebb.com as I'm a mortgage lender during the day. And with that, let's get into the podcast. All right, welcome back to the Couch GM podcast. I'm really excited for today's episode as we have on Mariners reliever, Justin Topa. First off, Justin, really appreciate you for taking the time today. Yeah, of course. No problem. I appreciate you having me on. I'm really looking forward to helping tell your story because I don't know how many Mariners fans truly know your background and what it's taken you to get up to this point. Um, most recently playing in Indie Ball in 2018. Five years later, you're the most valuable reliever on the Mariners staff in 2023. So let's go ahead and let's start back with your upbringing. Um, born and raised in Binghampton, New York. Do you want to just walk us through how you how you got involved in sports and your upbringing? Yeah, yeah. Uh, like you said, born born and raised in Binghamton. Um, you know, about an hour from Syracuse for people looking at a map. <laughs> about an hour south, um, upstate New York. Uh, you know, pretty traditional upbringing. Um, grew up with a minor league baseball team in our hometown, the Binghamton Mets. Now the Binghamton Rumble Ponies, the Double A team. Uh, so I. From an early age, uh, you know, my dad played college basketball. So from an early age, it was all sports. Um, you know, played pretty much everything, baseball, uh, basketball, played hockey, played golf in high school. So I tried a little bit of everything. Um, and I think initially my first first love was definitely baseball. Um, you know, going to games, like I said, minor league games with my dad growing up. Um, and then eventually I actually became the bat boy for the AA Mets uh, for, for a period of time, um, you know, when I was in middle school and high school. So, yeah, it was kind of just traditional. I kind of just fell in love with the game, playing in the backyard with my buddies. Uh, you know, we had five or six guys that, that grew up together on the same street. And, you know, it was kind of pick a backyard and we're playing, uh, we're playing wiffle ball or we're playing, you know, some sort of, some sort of sport, um, you know, throughout the summer and stuff like that. So I think that was a, a big, uh, big charge into, um, you know, being involved in sports is just having, having buddies, you know, you, you play a little bit of everything. And, uh, early on, just just trying to have fun with uh, fun with the guys. Yeah, so I'm trying to imagine, you know, in New York, because from what I hear, it's pretty snow, it's pretty icy. So, what's it like? You know, is it kind of where you guys find a frozen pond and you're throwing on ice skates? Is that is it is that the movies or is that actual real life? <laughs> uh, not really near us. Uh, we, we had uh, we had a couple of indoor rinks. Um, you know, one that was not even that's not even ten minutes from from where I grew up, my parents' house. Uh, uh, and then we had we actually had a minor league hockey team. Um, it started out as kind of uh, an ECHL team, and then it was an AHL team with the Senators for for a period of time. Um, so same thing, like going to those games with my buddies, um, you know, playing hockey. I started at a young age. I would say probably six, seven years old. Um, you know, like I said, the the group of us, we kind of all played the same sports, so it was kind of cool. You know. You'd always be at practice together, and then you know we go home and and you know do whatever, hang out and and uh, fool around. But but yeah, so with hockey and and you know obviously the cold weather it made it tough, especially for baseball season. Once that came around, um, there was a lot of indoor practices before the first game. Didn't really get to get outside until that first one. But um, but you know you kind of you kind of you know you deal with it uh, how you want to, and uh, and we we made it work for the most part. Yeah. So then getting into that story of you actually becoming a bat boy for that double A uh, Mets team, how, how did that, how did you get connected to that and tell us about that experience? Yeah. So growing up, I'm 
still a little bit still uh, a, a sports memorabilia collector. I would go to the games. I was that little kid going with you know a stack of cards or you know a baseball trying to get guys to sign uh, sign some stuff. Um, mm-hmm. So yeah, so we were always at the at the double A games. Uh, me and my dad. He'd travel a lot for work, but you know, whenever we got the chance, um, we'd be we'd be down at the stadium. Um, so it was kind of just by happenstance. We were at a game one time, and my dad, uh, I think we were in a concession stand line, and my dad got talking to a guy next to him, and it just happened to be the GM. Uh, his name is Bill Trelecki. He's he's passed since, but he uh, he was awesome from day one. We met him, and and literally it was like two days later we were at a game again. He's like, hey, you know, you guys are always here. You want to, you know, come down and be a bat boy for a couple games during the summer, blah blah. blah. So. It started out, um, you know, when I was eight, nine, ten years old, kind of doing it once or twice a summer. Um, and then once I turned 12, 13, I think I want to say it was 13, maybe uh, when I could do it kind of, quote unquote, full time and do, uh, you know, both visiting and home side. So, yeah, I kind of just jump into it. Like I said, just being around the stadium, being around those guys trying to get autographs as a, as a uh, young kid, it kind of just projected into uh you know getting into professional baseball as a bat boy essentially and uh so i think that just helped me when you know getting to that point you know further in high school okay what do i want to do play college baseball um i think initially it was like oh it'd be cool to play in college and then you know i got to college I was like oh it'd be awesome to play uh, professional baseball and then having that experience as a kid you know being around those guys guys that you know play in the big leagues david wright was there jose reyes was there uh, some other big names, Matt Lindstrom, guys that played in the big leagues for, you know, a handful of years, a long time, um, just to see them, you know, get from the low levels and, and you know, double A baseball to, to make that jump and have success in the big leagues was pretty cool. That's awesome. Any memorable stories that stand out to you about that experience or just the experience in general? Yeah, I think it was just the experience in general. Um, you know, there's a couple things early on. It was like, I don't even remember the guy's name, but uh, you know, you kind of get the, as a young kid in the clubhouse, Hey, can you go grab us the box of curveballs and uh, like stuff like that? Or like the left hand, the left-handed fungos in the back, you know, closet or something like that. So just, this is a cool little banter. You know, one time a guy put a, put gum, uh, like a gum cup, like gum around the edge of a cup and put it on my helmet. And so I was running out there grabbing bats and getting baseballs for the umpire and had a cup on the top of my head. So, you know, this is that stuff, but it was, it was cool for me because, you know, from early on, especially once I started doing it more often, um, you know, kind of those guys opened up and, you know, a lot of those guys I still talk to today um, that, you know, they're out of baseball or handful of guys. It's funny. I'll, I'll we'll play somebody and I'll be like, oh, that guy used to play in Binghamton or played against Binghamton when I was a bat boy. And I'll go up to him and be like, hey, I don't want to make you feel old, but <laughs> I was your bat boy when you were in double A. So it, awesome. that's cool. They, they kind of welcome me with open arms. And um, I think it helped. It definitely helped, you know, kind of break the ice. And then, uh, you know, once get into pro ball, I kind of had an idea of how things, how things rolled. Yeah, that's really cool. And then let's walk through your high school experience. You get in high school, you're playing baseball. At what point, if at some point you just pick baseball only, and then what's your experience throughout high school? Yeah, it was pretty, I guess, pretty early on. Um, I want to say like maybe sophomore year, I was like, all right, let's, let's, uh, focus more on baseball. I had broke my wrist in a hockey game and, uh, my freshman year that winter. And, um, I was like, all right, maybe we get off the ice. And I, it's funny, I haven't been on the ice since. <laughs> but, uh, but no, yeah, so it was pretty pretty early in my high school career. I was like, all right, let's focus more on, uh, on, on baseball here. Still played golf in the fall. It was a fall sport for us, so still did that um, in the winter. Uh, you know, I just, you know, instead of playing hockey, I was just training inside at, at the facility. And then um, early on, I was a position player. I was shortstop, second base, a little bit of third base, so never pitched until I committed to, to go to college. So um, really? I always thought I was going to be Derek Jeter, uh, you know, growing up in New York uh, in the mid or mid to late nineties. Uh, that was my guy. So, so that's what I always thought, you know, I tried to wear number two and tried to do everything uh, like him, but um, obviously it, it doesn't help when you can't hit. So, <laughs> so, uh, so yeah, so that, that uh, that's kind of how high school went, you know, I played two years of JV and two years of varsity. And then, uh, and once I committed to college, um, you know, after my junior year, I, uh, I was pretty much only pitching uh, senior year of high school. Wow. Okay. So you commit to LIU Brooklyn as a position player? Uh, no, as a pitcher. <laughs> it's, okay. it's kind of a little backward, but yeah, I never, I pitched a little bit here and there. It was nothing crazy. Okay. I would pitch, you know, every once in a while on, on JV. Um, I think my junior year of high school, my, uh, my high school coach actually still says he, that he, 
uh, made the biggest mistake by not pitching me my junior year. I think I only threw like four innings maybe. But uh, but then, yeah, I commit. Um, I go to a showcase uh, after my junior year that fall, going into my senior year, I guess. Um, and it was one of those showcases where you pay for your position. If you want to do multiple positions, you have to pay an extra $50 or $100, whatever it was. And I, I remember to this day, uh, it, was Hall- it was the day after Halloween, November 1st. It was up in Buffalo, New York, snowing like crazy. And it's me and my mom driving up there early morning. And I'm like, right, this is the last place I want to be right now. <laughs> but uh, when we go up there, I go through the whole day as a position player, do the hitting stuff, do the, you know, run the 60 yard dash, all that stuff. And uh, I'm like, all right, we're done. We can head home. And she's like, actually, I signed you up to pitch too. Um, yeah. At the time, one of my, uh, one of the coaches that I had in, in summer ball, uh, on a travel team, he was an associate scout for the Yankees. And he, I guess, in passing one time said to my mom, um, you know, I think he has a future on the mound. He's got a good arm. Um, so she kind of took it upon herself to, to sign me up to do pitching. So when I thought the day at the showcase was done, she was like, no, you're going to pitch. So it was one of those things where because we signed up for pitching so late, I was like the last person to go. So it was another, <laughs> another hour, uh, hour or so to wait, uh, to throw. And, I threw a bullpen, threw pretty well, um, and then in the parking lot, literally had two college coaches come up to the, up to me. One of them uh, was LIU, and uh, I had a, a high school teammate, actually, who was a freshman at the time at LIU, so I, I had experience, obviously, knowing the campus and knowing that he was there. And um, so, yeah, fast forward, I committed shortly thereafter and then went on my official visit after committing. So it was kind of <laughs> kind of did everything a little backward. Um, yeah, yeah right. so then – then my senior year is when I actually started to, to pitch more often. Okay. So junior year, you decided to go uh, pitching after that point. And then uh, senior year you pitch. Uh, do you remember kind of where you were sitting in high school and which pitches you had at that point as a starting um, pitcher? Velo wise, I, it wasn't very hard. <laughs> I mean, maybe mid eighties, maybe on a good day. Um, I was taller. I was kind of lanky. I was a skinny kid, but. Um, I think I threw, I threw a four seam, uh, curve ball, which was not good. Uh, I threw like a little split change, like a Vulcan type change up. Um, I don't even know if I threw a two seam at that point. I might've just started throwing like that senior year. I might've been fooling around with it, but, um, but yeah, so going into college, it was mostly a four seam curve ball, uh, a little bit sinker two seam, uh, and then like a Vulcan change up. So completely different repertoire. (laughs) Yeah, it's evolved a bit since then. Yeah. So then uh, you get to LIU Brooklyn. What's that experience like, college? Yeah, definitely a culture shock. Um, obviously, going to college, being away from home, not too far. We're you know three ish hours away um, from home, but but yeah, you're in the middle of New York City. We're in Brooklyn, New York, right over the Manhattan Bridge. Uh, so you're one subway ride away from from Times Square. So it was definitely uh, different than growing up in the small town of Binghamton, but it was cool for me because you, you always had something to do. Um, like I said, I had a, a high school teammate that was there. So he kind of helped me show the, show me the ropes, show me, you know, around campus, which was literally one city block. So he <laughs> couldn't get lost. It was about five buildings and a turf square. So, um, so, you know, it was, it was cool going into my freshman year that fall, obviously a lot of nerves, you know, you're away at college for the first time, um, you know, college baseball, all that stuff. And you're waking up early mornings for workouts. Um, get to the end of my fall and I'm like, I hate this. I, I want to go home. Um, kind of got talked, uh, talked to, you know, family, friends like that. And, you know, you know what, you know, you'll play the baseball season, see how it goes. And then we'll decide at the end of the year, if, if you're going to transfer out or, or what, what have you. And then, you know, come back in the spring and absolutely loved it. Loved the schedule, loved how, you know, we're traveling, then we're coming back for class and you're kind of, you know, busy, always busy right during the season. So, um, liked that schedule, liked how, how things rolled in the spring. So obviously stayed there and, uh, and then, yeah, it just, uh, kind of kept going from there. Yeah. So do you, I mean, it looks like you were a starter all throughout college moving into yeah. your freshman year. At what point did you become a starter on the actual, you know, main team? Yeah. So early on, I was, I was right. Uh, when, when the freshman year started, I was, uh, the sun, I was throwing on Sundays. We had a weird schedule. We would have a nine inning game on Friday and then two seven inning games on Saturday and then okay. one nine inning game on Sunday. So um, me and another freshman, we were 
uh, you know, kind of the bookends on the, the Saturday uh, that we had the double headers. Um, I think it was a great opportunity for me just to go in because I hate to say it, but we weren't very good. <laughs> um, the, if you look at the win loss record prior, um, you know, the few years prior and uh, even in the first couple of years, uh, hadn't really had a winning season in a while. So we were pretty young. We had a lot of young guys, a lot of young guys from like the New York City area. Uh, my freshman class, we, it was a lot of pitchers. So it was, it was cool, you know, blending with those guys and learning, um, learning together to go through, through, through that season. Um, but yeah, so we've kind of thrown in the fire right away, um, which I kind of liked, you know, you, you know, sink or swim type situation. So from early on, yeah, it was, it was a little bit of a battle, uh, you know, starting on, you know, the road when we, I think we went to, I want to say Virginia or North Carolina, maybe for our first trip. And, you know, like I said, we hadn't been outside to practice yet. If we did, it was like, we played catching and it was still snowing outside. So, uh, but no, it was cool. It was cool to, to get things rolling. And then once you kind of have that first season under your belt, it was, uh, it was nice to, you know, kind of have an idea of how things rolled as a, as a uh, college baseball player. Yeah, and then it looks like you were drafted by the Reds, uh, 33rd round in the 2012 MLB draft. So was that after your, mm-hmm. your junior year? Yeah, so so my sophomore year, the last, I guess it was the last regular season game, second to last regular season game, uh, tore my UCL. Um, knew I was going to miss the, the whole next year, 2012. So uh, 2011, that that summer was uh, surgery, rehab, all that stuff. We get back to campus in the fall still progress, start doing a throwing program type stuff. Um, I knew I was going to redshirt that year. It just, the timing of it wasn't ideal. Um, but I kind of, it kind of was a blessing in disguise because it kind of gave me a little extra time to go through the rehab process, kind of learn a lot about myself physically, mentally, all that stuff. Um, you know, I'd never had an injury. I'd, you know, never really did arm care just because I wasn't a pitcher at that point uh, in high school. So it was kind of, it was a, good learning curve for me and there's a lot of good people around uh you know the athletic trainers and stuff like that people I still talk to to this day that helped me get through that situation and um but yeah so I didn't pitch in 2012 and um just ironically I was throwing bullpens getting ready to go throw uh in summer ball at college Uh, I was going to Madison Wisconsin in the Northwoods League and I was throwing a bullpen one day on a I guess it was a Saturday Friday or Saturday, and um, we were playing Monmouth College, and Pat Light, uh, former first rounder for the Red Sox, supplemental first rounder, he was starting that day, so he was a big name. So they had you know cross checkers and scouting coordinators, everybody was there, and uh, I just happened to be throwing a bullpen kind of early during BP, and um, you know a couple of scouts were kind of just mingling around, taking a look, whatever, and uh, yeah, and that kind of just led to to the draft. I didn't have any implication of of getting drafted uh especially in 2012 um i was sitting at my uh my now in-laws house eating lunch and uh, my phone just started going crazy i wasn't even paying attention to the draft and uh so it kind of just it was out of nowhere for sure um but it was a cool experience um obviously i I ended up not signing but i'm glad i went through that uh through that draft process to kind of see how that whole thing rolled um i went and pitched in madison and had a good summer, had a lot of fun out there. So it was kind of like the first taste of that pro ball type schedule um, in the Northwoods League. You know, you're kind of playing pretty much every day, one off day, maybe a week. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, so it was cool to go through that experience. Obviously, I didn't sign, but went back to school and uh, it kind of it helped with that next transition that next year as a redshirt, I guess, a redshirt junior, um, knowing that, OK, I have this as kind of like the floor. I know, uh, you know, I went through that process with the you know, getting drafted by the Reds and, and hopefully that catapults to have a, a good season and maybe get drafted in 2013 yeah that's cool and then you move into your retro junior year it sounds like you pitch you start 14 games you throw 100 innings that year um and then you, you get drafted by the pittsburgh pirates in the 17th round of the 2013 mlb draft so what was that senior uh, junior year like and then that next experience with being drafted again yeah so a big a big reason why i also didn't sign was the fact that i got hurt um like i said in 2011 and we were we were going to the conference tournament for the first time in like 10 or 15 years i can't remember exactly but uh so like missing out on that experience was was tough for me i I wanted to experience that go through that conference tournament you know kind of have that high level um baseball at the end of the year so fast forward to you know i you know 2013 have a have a good year healthy which was huge 
Uh, and then we had the opportunity to, to go to the conference tournament again. Uh, we ended up losing the first two games, but just to have that was, was, was cool to experience, you know, with the guys, uh, you know, that you come in with, uh, you know, your freshman class goes through a lot of battles together. Um, and everybody does obviously, but to, to go through that conference tournament was awesome. And then, like I said, or like you said, you know, getting drafted by Pittsburgh, it was, I kind of had an idea of, uh, you know, talking to a handful of teams, I knew that the Pirates had thrown at a uh, pre-draft workout for them. That was the only draft pre-draft workout I threw at. But, um, but yeah, talking with different different scouts and stuff like that, I uh, kind of had an idea. And then it was funny. Our feed was, like, delayed at my house. So then, like, my buddies were texting me, like, <laughs> Pittsburgh. And I'm like, hey, well, what are you talking about? I haven't even, it's not even their pick yet. What are you <laughs> so yeah. it was, it was kind of funny. But, no, it was, it, was, uh, it was awesome. You know, going through, like I said, the draft process is crazy in and of itself. Um, so, be able to kind of go through it twice. Um, the second time, kind of having an idea that I was going to go at some point. Um, but just being, you know, with family and, and uh, my now wife, uh, she was there and just family, friends, stuff like that. And getting that phone call, it's a dream come true. You know, you, all you want in this game is an opportunity. And to get that opportunity with the Pirates, uh, it was awesome. I can't thank them enough. Yeah. So you get shipped off in uh, 2013. It looks like you were in low A. It looks like you were a reliever that year. And then the following year in 2014, they moved you back to being a starter. Yeah. So I was, uh, get drafted, like I said, uh, kind of through quote unquote, a lot of innings. I threw a hundred innings in the regular season in college. And then, you know, I think I had one more start in the conference tournament, but so going into it, they kind of, they were like, Hey, like you threw a lot. We're just going to put you in the bullpen, kind of like a piggyback role. Um, mm -hmm. so did that, uh, had a fun time in, in Jamestown, New York, not too far from uh, where I grew up. Uh, so it was, it was cool. A lot of family were able to come. We played pretty close. I mean, we, uh, Auburn, uh, New York was probably the closest we played, which is like an hour from, from my house. So I had a lot of family and friends come up to that and, uh, yeah, no, had a, had a fun year and just experiencing the, the low levels of minor league baseball, just to get used to that schedule. And, and you're driving, you know, across the state, you know, two, three states over, your long, long road trips, something like that, mm -hmm. terrible hotels, but it was cool. It's, uh, you know, a lot of those guys that were on that team, some of my best friends today, um, still talk to a lot of guys. And so it's, uh, it was cool to kind of get that and then, um, you know, kind of get projected to, to go to high A that next year, or excuse me, to low A that next year uh, in Charleston, West Virginia. Had a battle of a year. It was uh, kind of back and forth. Like you said, I was in the rotation a little more at that point. Um, mm -hmm. There was a lot of injuries. So it was kind of like I pitched a couple times in the bullpen, pitch in the rotation, kind of go back and forth. Didn't have the greatest statistical year, uh, as you can probably see. But <laughs> um, but no, it was cool. You know, you, you, you know, have that failure for the first time uh, in pro ball and try to ha how you navigate it over a full season. Um, it kind of helped me going going forward. And I can imagine that that would be tough having a, you know, uh, you don't know if you're going to be going out and throwing one or two innings versus going out, starting a game and they're trying to get five out of you. And then the recovery time between those, it's totally different. So I can only imagine how that would mess with you during that time. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. And then um, it looks like I don't see any stats for 2015. Do you want to walk us through the next couple of years there through 2016? Yeah. So um, 2015, like going to spring training, minor league spring training and, uh, the was projected to go to high a at that point um so you know just building up through through spring training and then boom another elbow injury which resulted in the second tommy john uh so i had that right at the toward the end of spring training early uh 2015 and uh so yes yeah, so i rehabbed all 15 in uh in bradenton florida and then uh the start of 2016 um obviously was rehabbing for most of the year. I think I got back in end of August, early September at some point, uh, and then threw a handful of innings out of the bullpen at the end of that year. Um, but yeah, just, you know, another, another bump in the road, another injury, which was, was tough. You know, obviously not too many guys come back from, from one. It's not more common now, but at the time, you know, uh, not too many guys went through one and came back and then let alone <laughs> go through it twice and, uh, and still, uh, still have success, especially, you know, at the lower levels in the minor leagues. Uh, to continue to, to to play, so it was difficult at times, um, you know. But at the same time, it was kind of like I had a head start on on the rehab process. Kind of had a, an idea of of how the process went. Um, we had a great group of guys. You know, nobody ever wants to get hurt, but when you do get hurt and you're you're around guys that are going through similar things with injuries, um, 
you know, it kind of makes it a little easier. We had a handful of big league guys. Uh, Nick Kingham was there. Jamison Tyon was there for a little bit of time. Um, mm-hmm. Casey Sadler, actually, that's where I first met uh, Sad. So, so we were all kind of going through the TJ uh, rehab at the same time. Um, so that kind of made it, quote unquote, fun. <laughs> um, we tried to make the, the best of it. But um, yeah, so obviously, you know, those two years were kind of a wash in a sense. And then um, go into spring, or excuse me, the off season between 16 and 17. Just getting ready to, to hopefully have a healthy year in 2017 and then unfortunately get released at the end of spring training. So it was kind yeah. of a overall wind after a, almost two years of rehab. Yeah. W- walk us through what that was like. Um, you know, in 2017, you were playing any ball that entire year. And then walk us through that. Yeah. That next year also. Yeah. So, like I said, went through all spring training pretty much last week of, of camp, uh, get called in kind of had an idea just the way that spring training was going. I didn't pitch a ton. I was backing up a lot of the big league games and never, never got in, but, um, but, you know, it obviously, you know, like I said, with, with two Tommy Johns, it's, it's tough um, to come back to that, come back from that and, and have success. But uh, yeah, I think it's another blessing in disguise. Um, you know, you get released and I remember the whole thing happening and my sister flew I t- called her right after. She's like, all right, I'm going to fly down to Florida and then I'll make the drive back with you. So, so she awesome. flew down to Tampa. I picked her up, stayed at my buddy's house that night, picked her up the next day at the airport and we drove uh, directly north. So it was, uh, it was a tough time, but at the same time, like just to have her there for that whole time and, and um, you know, that whole experience going through that together was, was really cool, especially looking back at it now. Um, you know, now that we're both, and stuff like that just to have that bond uh you know she was there for one of the worst times of my career and you know we're always there for each other type thing so um obviously a difficult time i was pretty much over baseball we spent a lot of time that uh that car ride just saying you know what next steps and i was over it i was kind of just over the business side of it like you know not really getting an opportunity obviously it didn't help myself being hurt but um so at that time i was like all right you know i'll figure out what i want to do next maybe go back to school take a you know maybe a month and see what happens and then um fast forward uh probably I don't know, three or four weeks i get a text message from a kid that the first person i ever met in pro ball um he had been he had asked for his release the year before and i knew he was playing indie ball uh and ironically he is a minor league coach for the mariners now uh michael francoso so so texts me he's like hey i'm playing indie ball in rockland new york which is a couple hours from where i grew up um don't know if you still want to play, but we're looking for pitching. Um, so like I already talked to our, to our manager, here's his number, reach out to him if you're interested, kind of left it at that. Um, I always tell him to this day, our manager, uh, I was like, I was hoping you weren't going to call. <laughs> so it kind of gave me a little writing on the wall that, uh, maybe this isn't it, but, uh, yeah. but no, so we called, we had a great conversation. Um, you know, he obviously knew about the injury pass. He was like, Hey, Indie ball can get a little crazy as a reliever. Like you kind of just always thrown out there. He's like, I would like you to, to be in the rotation. That way we can kind of limit your innings. We can kind of work through stuff on a five day rotation. If you have any bumps in the road. And so I was like, you know what? Talk to the family, friends. Um, everybody was kind of had the same thought. Uh, you know, you just rehab for almost two years. Why not give it at least one year in indie ball and kind of see what happens. Yeah. So I kind of just went into it like, you know what, let's, let's play one more year. Let's have some fun. Um, kind of go back to playing the game for fun and not necessarily as a job. And from day one, it was just an absolute blast. Uh, you know, those guys, it was, it was a cool mix because it was, we had guys that had pitched in the big leagues and then we had guys that were right out of college with no pro experience. And then like everywhere in between double A, triple A, low A. Mm-hmm. So you kind of got a blend of everybody. And, um, the competition was good. Same thing. It was like a lot of those teams had a handful of big league guys, a handful of young guys. So it was cool kind of navigating through that. And then, you know, I had a, a good year, probably the best statistical year of my career. Uh, that year in Rockland made the all-star team. So, you know, going into that off season, it was like, all right, maybe get picked up by a team, maybe see what happens. Um, you know, how can I kind of walk away at this point if I just had a, a great year yeah. and I feel healthy, velocity was back up a little bit. So, it was kind of a culmination of everything. It's like, all right, well, you know, let's see if I can throw for some teams. So I was reaching out to teams, trying to get some, some workouts, stuff like that. Um, threw for, threw for a couple teams, um, not a ton of interest. Um, the Rangers were one of those teams. 
so then fast forward to the next season in 2018, uh, decide to go back to, to Rockland, um, see what happens again. And ended up getting picked up halfway through the year by, uh, by the Rangers and uh, pitched in uh, mostly double A. And then uh, I think I had one start in, in low A or in uh, high A there for them. So during that process, do you have an agent throughout that, throughout that entire process? Or is this you reaching out to teams? Like, you know, I don't know if Twitter is really big at that point. Are you trying to DM people, just get connected to whoever you can? What, what's that like? Yeah, so it was kind of um, a little bit of a crap shoot. Um, I did have an agent. Um, he was helping out a little bit. He was sending stuff to teams and, uh, you know, trying to get some feelers out there. Um, I was also reaching out at times during the season to just scouts that I knew from college. Obviously there were amateur scouts. So it was like, Hey, like, mm -hmm. can you give me any contacts? Um, yeah. you know, that I, at least I can send an email and just say, Hey, I'm playing here. You know what I mean? Maybe send somebody over. But, um, so yeah, guys, so like that off season was a little tough. Um, I, it was, it was tough in the fact that like trying to put my name back out there, get video, get, you know, guys that come see me. Obviously, mm -hmm. Twitter, the whole like Twitter pitching ninja thing was kind of starting a little bit. Um, yeah. It was more so the next off season, but so we we're just trying to get video out to teams. And I, you know, talking to guys that had been in indie ball, then got back into affiliated ball. Um, one of the good buddy that I worked out with, uh, his name's Joe Maloney. He he was like, hey, I have a list of uh, of just like contacts from different teams, whether it be scouting department or um coaches stuff like that and he kind of gave it to me and i we figured <laughs> this is funny like thinking about it now but um just like grinding through it uh i figured out the um each team's like email handle so whether it be like yeah j copa at mariners.com or whatever it was yep. like every team had a different format so i figured that out and then went to like the staff directory and it was like all right head of pro scouting and then i was just like boom shooting cold call email uh over awesome. <laughs> and got a lot of like got a, it's surprisingly like got a lot of responses like i thought that you know it'd be like hey how'd you get this email like yeah. kick rocks type thing <laughs> <laughs> but no got got some decent responses from people and you know people are saying you know they appreciate you know reaching out like we have seen you throw blah blah, blah. Uh, keep us updated on like what your plans are send some more video send some analytics stuff so it was kind of like that beginning of like okay like at least i'm getting my name out and and uh and see how it goes and then it led to um you know signing with the rangers halfway through the year in 18. uh kind of got picked up out of nowhere i was on the disabled list with a blister so i missed a handful of starts and then came back through one in, in one game and uh and our manager called me in and said that the, they had picked me up so it's kind of a whirlwind for that that period of time it's like you're trying to do anything you can to to get back into affiliated ball and like any way possible. Um, so it kind of like took it upon myself to just grind and find some email addresses. Yeah, no, that's <laughs> awesome. It's funny. It's funny now, like looking back at some of the people I emailed, like one of the guys was with the Brewers um, and he was like the travel secretary I reached out to. So like somebody that has no, like <laughs> no influence in pro scouting. <laughs> so it was kind of funny. You got to shoot your shot. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> so then you get up to a uh, double A that year, you know, what was it like getting up to double A? Cause that might've been the biggest crowd that you played in front of at that point. You know, what was that experience to be able to see that, Hey, there might be some potential here starting to progress. Yeah, no, same thing. Like thrown right into the fire. went right met, met the team in, um, in Frisco, Texas. Uh, I think I literally, I'm trying to remember exactly. I think I flew into to Dallas, got like the physical, all that stuff. And then we had a road trip to Midland and it was like, Hey, game two, like you're starting game two. So it was like quick thrown right into the fire. Uh, like you said, first time double A. So same situation, like sink or swim, see what happens. And, um, had a good first start, felt like I was in a good position. Um, and then kind of went back and forth between the bullpen and the rotation again, as kind of guys got healthy in the organization, obviously being a guy at any ball, you were kind of expendable at that point. So there was yeah. some, uh, uh, phantom IL stints mixed in there. And, uh, you know, like I said, you know, pitching one inning on a Monday and then starting on Thursday and then throwing out the bullpen on Sunday. So it was like kind of all over the place, kind of another 2014 situation, uh, from a usage standpoint, but didn't really help myself. Another <laughs> not great statistical year. Um, and, 
and then yeah, we kind of went into that off season, kind of unknown what was going to happen. Being a minor league free agent, uh, it's kind of lonely uh, being, you know, not with anybody. Mm-hmm. So going through that off season, um, I had just moved down to uh, the year before. I had moved down to where we live now, and, and right outside of Philly, and uh, working out at the facility. You know, we have 15, 20 pro guys that work out there, so trying a bunch of different stuff. Uh, new pitching guy comes in that off season um, and starts talking about weighted balls and drive line and all this stuff. And I was like, you know what? Let's see what happens. You know what I mean? Like I got nothing to lose. Like what's the worst case scenario? I just retire. Like I was already planning on doing that two years ago. <laughs> so, yeah. so let's, let's uh, give it a try. And um, yes, yeah, so I went through that off season, kind of built out a program. That pitching guy ends up leaving uh, to get a job with the Astros new pitching guy comes in uh, a guy named George Zirkel um, still work with him to this day. And uh, yeah, so like everybody, it's me and one other indie ball guy, free agent uh, at the facility working out by ourselves. And um, it kind of was grinding at that time. It was like, all right, like, is this really what I want to do? Um, you know, go back and play indie ball again. Didn't really have many feelers out yeah. through for same thing through for a handful of teams, not crazy interest. Um, and then it was, the plan was to go, uh, to go to play indie ball again for one more year and then probably hang it up. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, so then that kind of, like I was saying earlier, it was right when Twitter, like pitching Twitter was, was getting yeah. going with pitching ninja and stuff like that. So one of the guys that worked out with, he was like, Hey, like you should just throw some videos up on, on Twitter to kind of see what happens. Um, cause it was like right, literally like right at that point where, Hey, tag pitching ninja and we'll retweet it. And you never know what's going to happen type thing. Yeah. So I was like, all right, whatever, right? What do I got to lose? And um, so I did that a couple of times. Uh, didn't really get much, had a couple of feelers out there. And then fast forward to like a random Friday um, in, in, I guess this was March at this point. Uh, you know, minor league spring, tra- or spring training in and of itself was at least halfway through, almost over. And uh, rainy day, much like today in Philly. And uh, me and this, the other guy, free agent, we go into to work out and we hadn't faced hitters in probably a month and uh, Harvard baseball just happened to be playing Penn that week and they got or weekend and they got rained out that day, but they were at the facility kind of working out, doing some stuff in the cages. And uh, the gym had a good setup that we could kind of do live ABs at any point. So the pitching guy, George, he was like, Hey, to the head coach, he was like, Hey, do you have anybody that might maybe wants to hit live off a couple free agents? And uh, so he was like, yeah, we can get a few guys and uh, go out there and, uh, I start throwing and I'm like 96 to 99 <laughs> inside Man. facing these guys. And it was kind of like, all right, where did this come from type thing? It was kind of yeah. first time getting adrenaline again, facing hitters after a month and a half and kind of had no idea what the plan was going to be for moving forward. Yeah. Um, so we put together a video. This was a Friday. We put together a video uh, to put up on Pitching Ninja. It gets retweeted like I don't even know how many times but then Saturday morning get a call from the Brewers and like hey we're kind of ready to move forward uh you know get a get an offer an opportunity and I was on a plane on uh, on Monday morning heading out to Arizona so it was it was kind of a whirlwind uh but yeah it's kind of just trying to get stuff in front of the right people and and uh it's funny I had I heard a story of how that whole thing happened on on the Brewers side a couple years later after I, I debuted but it was just cool to like to have that experience to you know going from cold calling or cold emailing teams and just trying to get people to take a look and then you know it's a random video that we put up on Twitter that gets <laughs> gets some traction. So you never know which one will pop off and take you take you somewhere. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Uh, let's get into that story real quick that you ended up hearing down the road. What what did the Brewers see that you know what was that like? Yeah, so um, this would have been – so I debuted in 2020. So that next spring get to, to Arizona early, and uh, now the, the manager, Pat Murphy, he starts calling me Chips. He's like – I'm like, Where, why are you calling me Chips? So what's up with his nickname? He's like, oh, I'll, I'll tell you eventually. I'll tell you. I'll tell you. So he keeps calling me Chips for a couple of days, and one day, finally, after – I forget what we were doing, throwing bullpens or something like that was a group of us standing there and, and uh, Woody, uh, Brandon Woodruff is like, Hey Murph, why are you calling them chips? So he's like, all right. So <laughs> the story is that uh, 
the GM now, Matt Arnold, he was, uh, I believe his title was assistant GM at the time, maybe. Um, the story is that he was sitting in bed with a bag of chips, eating, <laughs> eating sour cream and onion chips and scrolling through Twitter and just came across that video and forwarded it to somebody in pro scouting. And then next thing you know, it was, that's how I, I, got, <laughs> I got a job with the Brewers. So that's why he kept calling me chips the whole time. <laughs> That's so which is it's funny now it's uh it was something at first i was like murph what are we doing why are you calling me chips and then uh, to, to hear the backstory obviously like i said you know going through it on my end and then hearing you know kind of the opposite opposite side of things was was cool yeah that's awesome so then uh you get picked up by the brewers 2019 it looks like you're uh you get up to double a again and you're moved to a full-time reliever at this point it seems and then um yep. yeah walk us through 2019 2020 and then as you mentioned making your mlb debut yeah, so you know, get signed like I said late in in spring training of uh, of uh, 2019. Was in Arizona for I think I threw in the AZL for a couple games and then um, went and met the team in Biloxi, Mississippi, um, which was kind of cool because uh, a guy that was on the team at that point, Michael O'Neill, an outfielder, used to be with the Yankees and uh, he was actually with the Rangers. He was in Frisco when I got signed by the Rangers, so have a familiar face there um, showing up to the clubhouse. But uh, yeah, so, you know, go through the season 2019, a lot of, uh, a lot of ups and downs that year. Um, a lot of stuff like off the field that was going on with, with family and stuff like that. And that kind of, you know, made it tough in that aspect, but being able to, to, to go right to double A, have some success right away. Um, I think I had like 10 or 12 games, didn't give up a run. Um, and then, had to leave for some family stuff, came back, had a little bit of time in, in high A, and then got called back up to, to Biloxi to finish the year. And I had a good year. It was, like you said, the first time as a reliever, um, kind of a different role. People always say, like, oh, what do you like better, relieving or starting? I like both of them. It was just I had been back and forth so much uh, in my career. It was like, all right, let's just pick one. So um, being able to kind of go through that year being, all right, this is you're going to be a reliever, one, maybe two inning guy. Um, I kind of was able to build that routine and, and know like, okay, you know, third, fourth inning, you know, the starters at X number of pitches, let's start moving around. Let's get our body ready. Mm -hmm. Kind of have an idea, you know, in double A, that's kind of where you start to build some scouting reports for hitters. So you kind of had that, like that, that plan going through that season. Um, and that just progressed into the off season. I was a pending minor league free agent again. So that was kind of, kind of tough going into the year, knowing that, uh, possibly a minor league free agent, but right away the Brewers expressed interest in, in re-signing. So signed a minor league deal there, uh, was backing up some big league games during 2020, got into a, a handful of, uh, handful of games there. And, um, I think at that point it was just huge just to get some eyes from like the big league staff, um, you know, throwing any big league games or, you know, through a couple live VPs in the backfield and stuff like that, um, in front of those guys. And, and then obviously COVID happened, uh, which is not ideal at that point, you know, coming off a, a good year in double A. Um, I was hoping, you know, maybe start the year in double A, get to triple A, maybe see what happens. And then um, next thing you know, we're on a flight back home uh, at the end of March to, for COVID. But uh, I always say to people, like, when that happened, I felt like I had a leg up on everybody because I'd been released before. I'd been kind of in that weird limbo of like, I don't know what's going to happen. So right away, like I literally landed. I was like, all right, said to my wife, who's a PT, I was like, hey, can you go get some dumbbells from the uh, <laughs> from the, uh, the uh, facility and, and bring them home? And I was doing some some garage workouts and stuff like that. And I ended up building building a mound for the backyard. Uh, there was a high school catcher that lived uh, a couple neighborhoods over. Um, so he came over to catch some bullpen. So I like, kind of like right away, it was kind of like an easy transition for me. Um, I kind of knew what I needed to do to stay ready. And uh it was also cool because like the, the facility I work out, worked out at, um, like I said, I had a lot of pro guys. So we were all kind of up in the air. We, you know, it could be two weeks. It could be a month. Like we have no idea. So uh, we ended up forming like a little league, like a COVID league. And uh, it was like, hey, we're playing a doubleheader on Tuesday and a doubleheader on Friday. So like whoever wants to come play. Yeah. So we got a bunch of guys, same thing, range of you know, high school kids, college kids, JUCO, low level minor leagues uh you know higher level minor leagues kind of a mix of everybody um come play and just stay in shape and, and uh stay ready and um yeah so i was just like sending video to our pitching coordinator um 
you know, while this whole thing is going on and, uh, and then the, the, I guess COVID 2.0 happens, um, don't get invited to, to COVID 2.0. So I was like, all right, well, or COVID spring training 2.0. And, uh, I was like, all right, well, I guess I'll just stay and see what happens. See what, you know, stay in shape, kept sending videos, kept sending, that was probably annoying with the texts, <laughs> like, Hey, just threw again today. You know, here's some oh, yeah. video, here's some velos, all this yeah. stuff. And then, uh, fast forward to once the, uh, um, you know, the big league season started and they had like the, the little COVID camp, um, at every different spot. Ours was in Appleton, Wisconsin at the time, but, um, finally, you know, end of August or excuse me, beginning of August, end of July, got the call saying, Hey, we're going to add you to the, the player pool or I forget what they called it. But, um, so yeah, go out to Appleton, Wisconsin, drive out there, do all the COVID testing, all the, all that stuff. Um, and then kind of go through a month of just playing inner squad games with the, with the boys, you know, everybody's grinding. We're just showing up, working out, mm -hmm. playing catch, you know, playing three inning games or whatever, going back to the hotel, not really like mingling because it was just so up in the air. Couldn't really do much. Um, and then fast forward to end of August. Um, it was the trade deadline that year was the end of August. I think it was the 30th, the 31st. I think it was the 31st actually. And the day before, um, one of the coordinators uh, who's now in college baseball, um, Jake McKinley, called me in. We had a great relationship, still do. Um, he called me in like, hey, like, trade deadline, never know what's going to happen. Like, I, like uh, as an older guy, he's like, you've been through a lot of stuff. Like, I know you can handle this. It's not going to change anything. But, like, don't be surprised if, if I call you in the morning, you have to go somewhere. So there's kind of like that in the back of my head, just like, yeah. I still get chills, like thinking about that conversation. Um, so I kind of like went back to the hotel and was like, ah, should I pack maybe? Or like, <laughs> so I call my wife, um, the girlfriend at the time, now wife, and uh, kind of tell her that. And she's like, well, what does that even mean? And I was like, are, she's like, are you getting traded? I was like, I don't know. I gotta <laughs> pack a little bit and just in case. And then, you know, wake up and I think it was a later day at the, uh, at the field that day. I want to say it was like 11 o'clock or 12 o'clock start so I wake up and boom phone call from from Jake saying I'm getting called up and, and added to the roster and uh had to drive down to Milwaukee so it which it was cool too because uh a teammate of mine Trey Supak he um he also had got called up that same day and now Trey was with the Pirates um I believe he was drafted in 2014 or 2015 so I knew Trey from when he was first drafted as a high schooler and then, like, I was released, whatever, he got traded to the Brewers, and then we played together again in 2019, and then we were both getting called up for the first time together um, that year or so. So that was special, too. It's, like, kind of knowing what we had both gone through to get to that point, um, yeah. even though there was no no fans in the stands. Um, but, yeah, it was just a dream come true, getting that phone call, calling, you know, my sister, my wife, my, uh, my dad, you know, a lot of tears of joy. Um, but then calling, you know, I tried to make it a point to call, you know, high, my high school coach, let him know, thank him for everything, college coaches, all that stuff. So it was a, it was an overwhelming, uh, you know, couple hours before I had to lock it in and I'm like, all right, we got a game to play tonight. So <laughs> that's amazing. So yeah, walk me through that emotion of when you first saw your phone ringing, where you're like, hey, okay, I'm getting traded right now, and then he's saying you're, you're getting called up. What's that like? Yeah it was it was weird because like like i said we had that conversation and i was like all right like he probably had that conversation with a handful of other guys too like uh yeah you know what's gonna happen type thing um and then i you know i saw his name on the phone and my heart just dropped i was like what's happening like this is this yeah. could go many different ways <laughs> so yeah it was just a lot of uh a lot of emotion um we had lost my mom that off season before uh, she passed away in December of 2019. So that was like the first thought in my head um, because like I said earlier, she was the one that, uh, you know, did the whole pitching thing at that showcase. And she, you know, I would say that she had a hand in hand in everything. Um, yeah. So like, that was the first thought for me is like, you know, if I didn't do that, if she didn't, you know, have me pitch that day, I'd probably out of baseball, probably doing something weird. <laughs> like who knows, but um but yeah, so it was like, it was a whirlwind of emotions. Get off the phone with him. First person I call is my, uh, my dad. Um, he was, he travels for work. So he was driving on the highway somewhere and he's like, oh, let me pull over, hold on. And then, you know, 
he he's you know crying we're we're both crying so it was uh it was a cool cool couple hours you know calling my wife she was at work doesn't answer her cell phone so then i have to call like the front desk so she thinks like the worst is happening <laughs> it's yeah. like there was a lot of emotion and uh, a lot of directions that it could have gone but yeah it, it was just a culmination of a lot of stuff like like i was saying like it's been a, it was a long road to get to that point and um to get the opportunity to get called up and and pitch in the big leagues it's it's one of the highlights of my my life for sure yeah that's amazing and then you drive down to milwaukee and uh for your first time being in a big league stadium as a player there's no fans in the stadium what's that entire experience like <laughs> yeah it was crazy um you know pulling off the exit seeing i don't know if you've ever been to milwaukee but when you know the way that we would come from appleton you kind of come down to the exit and you just see you know miller park or american family field um to the right and uh you just got chills and was like no like no way they're gonna like let me into the parking lot they're like you, know, you see like horror stories they're like oh the guy the security guard wouldn't let me in and uh pull right up and like oh yeah we're expecting it that thing so it was cool um clubbies came out everybody was happy it was weird like you said with with covid yet we had to come in as completely separate entrance we came through like the concourse like the fan entrance uh mm -hmm. got tested uh the the covid testing and then all the food and everything was on the concourse there's just tables set up with you know trays of food so eating there meeting some of the guys i'd met a handful of the guys um during spring training just backing up some of the games mostly the relievers um and then there was like one or two guys that uh were at the alternate site that had got called up as well so seeing them and then you know walk into the clubhouse first time see your locker uh just instantly in awe and get chills and uh, you know, my lockers between Ryan Braun and Eric Sogard, just two <laughs> guys that had a ton of time and, you know, long careers. Um, you know, Brawny comes over, introduces himself. Yelly, Yelich comes over, he introduces himself. It was like, everybody's, you know, so welcoming, so open. You know, those two guys, I say to this day, like they came over, introduced themselves. I'm like, yeah, I, I know who you are. <laughs> <laughs> Hyper but, baseball uh, card at home. <laughs> yeah, right. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> But no, so it was like, it was totally surreal. Um, like you said, then, you know, we go off of batting practice and you're looking around, you're like, oh, this is, this is strange. Like, it's just quiet. Obviously, you know, you have music playing and, and then you get to the game and it's just crowd noise. So it was, uh, it was a weird 24 hours, um, just kind of soaking all of that in. And, and uh, I didn't, I didn't get in that first day, um, but uh, it was actually ironic that that first day, uh, August 31st, we played the pirates. So there's a lot of guys that I knew from, you know, my being drafted there, one of my closest friends was on a team at that time. So seeing him, my first day in the big leagues, um, seeing, you know, five or six of the coaches, uh, you know, a handful of other guys that I came up with or rehab with at the time, it was, it was pretty surreal. Just, uh, kind of, a, a you know, it kind of brought everything back from, from the beginning. Absolutely. So then who was the first batter that you faced and what was that first AB like, you know, up on the mound? To be honest, I always get this confused. Uh, <laughs> I want to say it was Candelario. I actually have the lineup card over here. I'd have nice. to look at it, but um, yeah, I forget. It was against the Tigers. Um, shoot. I wish I could remember the exact Nico Goodrum. Maybe it was like one of those lefties that were on, was on that team. And uh, yeah, a little first, first pitch or second pitch it was like a little weak dribbler to third base and we were shifted over so infield single so it was oh, like man. all right here we go let's see what happens uh ended up giving up a two-run homer but um went back out and you know to start that next inning uh you know get throw my warm-up pitches I knew kind of where we were it was just like a blur of where we were in the lineup I kind of had an idea and then get the ball back from, uh, I think Sogar was playing third base, get the ball back from him. And I look up and it's just, boom, Miguel Cabrera. Oh, my and Lord. I was like, Oh boy, like, here we go. Like, this is, that's, that was kind of like the welcome to the big leagues moment. It was like, all right, this is a, this is a guy that I've, I've watched in my childhood and, uh, got him to fly out to right field and, um, got through the next inning clean. And, uh, so yeah, it was, it was, uh, it was pretty surreal. Uh, like you said, a little weird with the no, uh, no fans, no family in the stands, but um, all the cardboard cutouts, everybody was screaming. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. And it looks like you got, you ended up getting two strikeouts that first outing. Um, and then, yeah, walk me through the rest of that year, what that, what that experience was like. 
and then moving into 2021, a bit of a different experience that off season, I imagine. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, we go on the road that next trip and I actually got option. We were in Cleveland. I kind of got option the first day, but I stayed with the team on the taxi squad for that road trip. Um, went back to the all site for one or two days and they called back up and spent the rest of the year. Um, or I guess the rest of September with the team. Uh, and then kind of got, we got the first experience of playoff baseball for me, uh, in the big leagues had a good, you know, handful of, of outings leading up to that, um, was pitching in some pretty, high leverage situations at times um and then you know we get to the last game of the season i, I forget if we needed i think we needed the giants to to beat somebody i forget who it was to get into the playoffs and we were in we were in st louis so it's kind of like one of those anticlimactic uh celebrations we had just lost so it is now our hopes were in uh in the hands of of the giants to to beat whoever it was but um which happened. So it was kind of like an anticlimactic, like, all right, we celebrate, but we got to get on a flight. We're going to LA to play the Dodgers. So it was kind of a, a cool little, cool little flight to get over there. And, uh, you know, a lot of nerves. Um, first time in LA playing Dodger stadium in the playoffs, which obviously if there was fans, it would have been crazy. It was pretty yeah. crazy, obviously <laughs> without fans. Uh, they had the, the sound system turned up pretty good, but, uh, yeah, getting the opportunity, I pitched, um, I guess it was game one, pitched game one in relief, pitched two innings. Um, I think it was two innings. Uh, seems like a blur now, but <laughs> um, yeah. pitched a couple innings there and I think it was two innings. But, uh, but yeah, had had a clean outing there and kind of got back to the hotel after and was like, holy crap, did that just happen? Like pitched in Dodger Stadium in the playoffs in the major, in the major league. It's like dream come true, right? Like yeah. you want to, to get to the big leagues and then you want to play in postseason. So it kind of all happened in this, short weird season of covid um so yeah so getting back to the you know the off season after getting home after that it was like finally sitting down and being like all right holy cow like what a year you know obviously everything with covid and then you know throw in making debut pitching the postseason all this stuff it was like a culmination of, of emotions and it was like all right well we gotta lock in we gotta get ready for for 2021 and going to camp um you know kind of on a high note, obviously I had a good year in, in 2020, kind of knew I had a chance to maybe make the team out of camp. Um, didn't have a great spring training, but it was one of those where they kind of said like, hey, like what you did last year proves proves a lot to us. So um, I got told I was gonna make, I made the team, um, I guess that Wednesday before camp broke. And then I threw in a, a backfield game on that Saturday and felt something in my elbow again. So, <laughs> So it was like we were flying out Sunday. That was Saturday. Get an MRI, uh, a couple of different readings, um, and then so I ended up being like flexor strain. So started the year on the IL, uh, rehabbed in Arizona. Came back, um, I guess like three months later, maybe three or four months later after a rehab assignment. Called up. Didn't have a great year numbers wise. Was very inconsistent mechanically still battling some of the elbow stuff and then all of a sudden boom one pitch felt it kind of go um and worst case or worst thought for me was oh there's another tommy john another ucl reconstruction so a lot of emotions after when you're coming out of that game like i thought you know this is it this is over that's just how it's gonna end um and go in you know mri the next day uh Team doctor says, yep, UCL tear, flexor tear. So I talk, call my agents, kind of explain the situation to them. They're like, hey, like, take a deep breath. Let's get it checked out. I had my two previous surgeries were with uh, Dr. Alchek in New York. So um, it was like, hey, let's have Doc, let's go see Doc in New York, get a second opinion, see what he says. And uh, just fast forward to that. He, he was like, hey, this is not your UCL. Your UCL looks completely fine. Uh, this is a flexor strain. It's the same thing that was in spring training. It essentially just didn't heal and it ended up having more of a tear. Um, so at that point it was like, all right, let's get surgery, get surgery. And uh, it got surgery in September of, of 21. So go through the off season, uh, another kind of weird off season with the, the lockout that year going into 2022. Yeah. Um, but going through rehab, knowing that I was going to miss maybe like a month, month and a half. Um, so we're going through that process, stay in Arizona when the team breaks, 
and then I randomly wake up one day, throw in a game, and I had a I got a rib fracture in my <laughs> the left side of my rib. <laughs> so it was just like it was like all right, what else can happen type thing. Um, and so that was weird. Another you know four weeks, four to six weeks um, rehabbing that, and then finally getting back and uh, and was able to to finish the year between uh, went right to Nashville pitched in Nashville for, um, I guess maybe a month or so got called up and then, uh, and then it was back and forth, maybe one other time, but then finished, finished the year in Milwaukee. Um, and yeah, so it was, it was kind of just like, all right, end the year healthy. Like let's, <laughs> yeah. let's end the year healthy, get into the off season. Uh, I was getting married. We were getting that married that off season. So like, let's just, let's just get going here. <laughs> right. So that's through 2022 and then, yep. Um, January 7, 2023, you're obviously traded to the Mariners. And so you get the call from your agent, you've been traded to Seattle. What, what happens next? Walk me through that process. Yeah. So another kind of crazy story just to add to the mix. So, um, I said, we got married, we got married in 21. My wife is probably going to see this and correct me, but <laughs> so that off season, we were, uh, we were expecting our first child, uh, in March. So going through that off season, it was full of, um, full of, you know, a lot of baby purchases and uh, baby showers and stuff like that. But uh, so we were actually January 7th, uh, we were in Binghamton uh, doing a baby shower for uh, like my side of the family and middle of the party, get a phone call. I look at the number. I was like, I don't have it, whatever, ignore it. And then I get a text from our GM, uh, Matt Arnold. Uh, he's like, hey, it's Matt. Can you just give me a call back? So I'm thinking worst case, and I was like, oh, I'm probably getting DFA'd. Uh, what's gonna happen next? And literally get on the phone. He's like, hey, like, hope you're doing well. Um, we've actually traded to the Mariners. Uh, you know, they'll be contacting you. Like, we appreciate everything. Um, Matt and I have a great relationship. I, we text every once in a while. Um, you know, now that especially now that you got the job in, in uh, as the GM in, in Milwaukee. Wish them nothing but success there, but Matt has always been nice to me, great to me. So it was it was, uh, it was nice that he he was the one that made the call. And then I called my agent. He was at a wedding, and actually he's like, I was like, hey, just got traded. He's like, oh, and uh, he said another team. I was like, no, Seattle. He's like, oh, really? He's like, oh, I thought it was gonna be there were like two or three other teams that we kind of heard, but didn't want to like worry you guys with the baby shower and everything. Um, so yeah, then, uh, Justin Hollander gave me a call probably 10 minutes later, talked to him, had a great conversation and, uh, walked back into the baby shower and it was like, Hey, all those brewers onesies that we just got as gifts, we're going to have to <laughs> send them back. <laughs> <Your teeth. laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. So, so no, it was cool. Uh, like I said earlier, uh, first person I met in pro ball, Mike Francosa, he was one of the first people to reach out to me and said, Hey dude, you're going to love it here. Um, I had a few guys I worked out with Brian O'Keefe I've known for a handful of years um, we worked out together uh, Jacob Nottingham was there he was in Milwaukee with me um, Casey Sadler he was one of the first guys to reach out to um, so just kind of like going into camp knowing a handful of guys um, or like friends of friends baseball is one big fraternity so it's like you feel like you know somebody that knows somebody at all yeah. times so um, to, to walk into spring training kind of have some familiar faces was uh uh, definitely a lot, uh, a lot more calming, um, and to to get things rolling there in spring. Yeah, so we we hear about the Mariners and their pitching lab, you would say, and their ability to be able to identify and then develop pitching talent, especially in the past few years, has been has been great. So I'm curious, you know, you get down to spring training with the Mariners and get into that Mariners pitching lab. What exactly are they showing you, uh, advising you on to help utilize what you have or to add to what you have? And then obviously, you know, that turned into your 2023. Yeah, um, it was kind of, again, kind of thrown right in the fire in a sense. Um, kind of get called in one of the first couple of days of camp, uh, pitchers and catchers, and Woody, Woody texts me. And, um, he's like, hey, come in to, uh, come in a little early. We want to kind of do like a pitching one-on-one -on -one analytics type meeting. And uh, so we kind of broke it down. It was like right away, it was like, He's like, hey, what do you think you do well? What do you think you need to work on? And then, like, they did the same thing. We think you do this well. You think, you know, you need to work on this. And I had just learned to cutter that off season, uh, so I was fooling around with that. I'd always kind of just been sinker slider, um, and 
didn't really ever throw a change up either. I think I threw five change ups in 2022, if that, wow. <laughs> but uh, always a sinker slider. So that off season, the goal was like, all right, let's learn something in the middle. Cause my sinker can be big at times. Slider can be big at times. So I kind of wanted like a little cutter or maybe like a bullet slider or something to kind of be in the middle, something that I could have success against lefties with too. Cause I didn't have great success up to that point against lefties. Uh, didn't face a ton, but you know, kind of, they could just sit on one or the other with the, with the sinker slider. So going into the off season, that was the goal. And um, so going into that meeting too, I was like, you know, the big thing for me was the, the cutter this off season, trying to implement that more against lefties, kind of open things up, get them off the sinker and the slider. And then Trent blank, he was just like, why don't you throw your change up? And I was like, I just have never really been told it's a good pitch. Um, not that I didn't have, like, I liked throwing a change up. It was just one of those things where like, didn't really have much feedback on it. So it was like, oh, like, why throw it? We never really called it in games. Uh, so he's like, no, I think I think the changeup can be, you know, something that we can really throw in there against lefties, especially with the cutter now, kind of two different looks. Um, so essentially went from a two-pitch pitcher in 2022 to three and a half pitches. I would say a half pitch just because the cutter was – we didn't really know what we had yet. Um, and so the goal out of that meeting was like, all right, when you – you're going to face a lot of lefties in spring training. Just we're going to be a lot of heavy changeups, mm -hmm. uh, throw some cutters off that and kind of just see what happens. And uh, I actually told somebody today that um, with the cutter, it was funny after one of my appearances, second or third game, uh, Skip comes up to me after and he's like, Hey, like, I know you threw a lot of cutters against the, the lefty, one of the lefties. He's like, I don't see you throwing a lot of cutters in the season. Um, I think it's going to be more like sinker, front hip sinker and some change-ups. But like it was, you know, good sequencing, whatever. And then fast forward, I threw a ton of cutters, <laughs> cutters <laughs> against lefties. So it, it was cool um, in the beginning, kind of just be like, hey, this is what we think you do really well. And kind of broke down their philosophy. And I say it's like I joke with people that they break it down to this very simplistic mindset. Um, and it's like you, you step back as a player, you're like, oh, yeah, oh, I do have to throw more strikes. Like, don't walk people. You know what I mean? Like, stuff that you're like, duh, like, why would I not yeah. do that? But you get so caught up as a player in, like, you know, especially now with analytics, like, oh, I need the horizontal break on this to do that. And I got to throw, you know, my fastball at this speed. So it's like you kind of get away with let's just attack this this little simple simplistic uh, mindset. Um, you know, and just seeing the numbers too, it's like, you know, uh, getting to 01 against a hitter, guys batting average drops yeah. to this. And then if you get to 02, it drops significantly more. And they just kind of, the way that they presented it, it was like, this makes a lot of sense. Why not just try it and see what happens? And uh, so I think it's like, it's funny seeing like the tweets and stuff like that. People are like, oh, the pitch, Mariners pitching lab, you know, you know, changes the guy's career again. I don't know if it's like the, it, it, I don't know. Obviously, there's certain cases of you know you guys go in the labs, they work on mechanics, they open up new things, learn a new pitch. 100%. Obviously, doing that, but also like being getting the information of this is good. Like this is a very good pitch. We got to throw it more. We got to throw for strikes. We got to get ahead. We got to stay ahead. We got to finish guys. And just having that mindset that players get away from, I think that is even bigger of a of a feather in their cap than, than, you know, trying to, you know, tweak guys, mechanics, do this, do that. Um, it's just simplifying the game and, and focusing one pitch at a time more than anything. Yeah. So it's more so getting down to the fundamentals of baseball. If you throw more strikes, you're going to get more guys out versus now you walk someone they're on base and then there's the ability for the next guy to do damage and score a run. Right. That's right. Yeah. At that point, it could just be a, a you know, snowball effect can get out of hand quick right and as you mentioned just going through your arsenal you threw the the two seam 44 percent of the time the slider 30 percent of the time the cutter 18 percent and then that change up seven percent of the time um i mean clearly so you move into 2023 you end up having a phenomenal year as i mentioned you're the most valuable reliever on the mariners staff um 75 games pitched in seattle what was that entire experience like and at the same time uh, during that same off season, Gabe Spire, Taylor Saucedo, uh, got are are all added to the Mariners roster at the same time that you were. 
So what was it like coming into spring training with all those different relievers that the Mariners had just brought in? You're kind of forming this new bullpen moving forward. Yeah, no, it was it was cool. Obviously, played with Trev a little bit uh, in Milwaukee. Our paths kind of crossed um, when I came back. But so I knew Trevor going into camp. Um, Gabe and Sauce, I didn't really know going into camp. Um, but we were all kind of, the three of us were kind of in the same situation. We all had options. Um, you know, we had kind of been up and down AAA big leagues a little bit. Um, so it was kind of like right away, kind of the fearsome foursome as skip called it at one point during the season uh the four of us we were kind of always hanging out together um you know messing around whatever and then so yeah so getting you know the season started uh you know gabe gets called up i guess it was like day one or day two when robbie went down and um uh, and then i had got called up shortly thereafter and then sauce shortly after that. So it was like right away where the, the four of us were kind of, uh, you know, kind of thrown in the fire again. Like, like I said earlier, it's kind of been the mantra of my career. It's kind of sink or swim type thing. Mm -hmm. But, um, but yeah, going, like going into the season, I was like, all right, you know, I kind of have an idea of how, you know, you, you obviously see how the, the, the spring plays out and um, numbers wise. And, you know, knowing that at some point, hopefully you get the opportunity to make an impact with the team. Um, I didn't, ever expect it to be 75 games especially with like the injury history and all that stuff yeah. um you know that was one of the first conversations with skip uh during spring training it was like hey we just need you healthy like so we're going to communicate with you you're going to communicate with us like don't ever feel like you're stepping on somebody's toes or that we're going to look at it in a bad way if you say hey like i'm hanging i need a day or yeah. whatever it might be this unbelievable communication from the get-go um, I think we were all in the same same boat. It was like, let's just be healthy this year. Um, you know, whatever that takes, whether it be, you know, limited innings or, you know, to having a day here or changing some training regiment stuff. Um, so going into the season, I was like, all right, that's my goal is just no IL time this year. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, and thankfully, from the beginning, it was got a good routine down, um, you know, met the team in Cleveland there. Uh, first game that I pitched at and kind of just catapulted from there. Um, kind of thrown, like you said, thrown in the fire. Uh, you know, Mooney had been hurt at that point. Uh, he had, he was, uh, you know, down for a little bit. And um, like I said, with, with Gabe and Sauce, as the two lefties, we were all in that same situation of getting a first extended taste in the big leagues. So it's cool to get to go through those uh, experiences with those guys and, you know, just getting lunch or getting breakfast before the game, getting uh, before you get on the bus and, and kind of talking through it and, and all that stuff. Like I was just talking to Gabe yesterday about different stuff. So um, to be with those guys, all of us being new to the organization and kind of all going through the same thing, it kind of made it an easy transition. Um, but yeah, so it was, it was a whirlwind in the beginning. It was like, all right, you know, I know I'm throwing a lot, but I feel great. Keep taking the ball whenever you can type situation. Yeah, so I'm curious what it looks like when you're prepping for a series or for a game. Do they give you notice well ahead of time what situations you're going to be coming in so you know when to start getting warm and moving around? Yeah, a little bit. Um, our pre-series scouting reports, our meetings are awesome. Um, we kind of do a little highlight video of, of the previous series. Um, then we get a, get the the plan ready for, for you know whoever we're playing. So we kind of have an idea – you kind of have your, like your pocket that you think you might throw in. Obviously, game dictates everything. Yeah. Um, but for me, it was like, just be ready at any point. Be ready at any point, you know, whether it be the third inning or the 10th inning, like whatever, anything in between. Um, and I, like I said earlier, that year in Biloxi in 2019, kind of having that first year as a reliever, kind of knowing like, all right, watch the game, feel things out, start moving around, get your body ready. So that when that fall, phone call you know, it does come, you're not caught off guard type situation. So yeah. I was able to, I think we all were able to establish that pretty quick. Um, if you ever look down in the bullpen, I felt like we were all kind of around the same time, third, fourth, fifth inning. We were all, you know, moving around. Guys are, you know, stretching, foam rolling, doing bands, doing weighted ball stuff. Just knowing that at some point it's going to be our turn, you know, it's, the, the game's going to be turned over to the bullpen. So can't thank Voter enough, obviously, Stephen Vote in Cleveland. So I hate to see him go now, but, um, but he did an unbelievable job, you know, getting us ready for that communicating like, Hey, you know, this might be the situation. 
we kind of like this matchup, whether it be, you know, could be for Gabe, we got two lefties coming up uh, or sauce, you know, you got a handful of lefties and a righty, you know, with his sinker, get a ground ball. It could be any situation. So um, kind of going into the series, you kind of have an idea. You have your, your ideas of guys who you might face. Um, but for me and for all of us, it was just like, gets to the point of being ready for when that phone call came, it was an easy transition. Yeah. I have one more question and then we'll get into some questions that some various fans have. Um, so talking about days of rest throughout the season, you played uh, 21 games without, without any days of rest, 23 games with one day of rest, another 21 with two days of rest. So most of the games that you're pitching in, it's two days or less of rest. You mentioned early in, early in your career or in college, you weren't doing much arm care. I'm curious what the recovery looks like for a major league reliever to where you're trying to throw, you know, as often as you can, but you know, the game gets over, you just threw that night. What's the process look like to get ready for throwing the next day or the day after? Right. Yeah. Um, I, I have always had kind of a good arm care plan after being hurt for, for so many times I've uh, taken, taken some, uh, some priority and like, all right, let's lock down some, some stuff that I know I can do might not be heavyweight, might just be band stuff that day. Um, and then just communicating with the, the training staff in Seattle, those guys, unbelievable. TB, Kevin, you know, KT, those guys, uh, you know, get on the table to cause at times, just kind of feeling out and be like, Hey, this is what I'm feeling. All right, let's do this. Um, so for me, it was like pitching a game, come out, do whatever arm care I had that day. I kind of had like three different programs that I would cycle through for like every time mm -hmm. I would throw very minimal weight, kind of just let's just get some blood flow to the area. Um, sometimes I would jump in the sauna after the game, try to, you know, get some more blood flow to the, to, to the body just to help that recovery process. Um, but yeah, and then from like a workout standpoint, I, during the season, I try to do my pre-stretch, like warm up is kind of like a mini workout, I guess. Um, very, you know, kind of just get the heart going. Let's do some mobility stuff. Uh, and then I try to get like an actual total body workout uh, twice, once between, you know, Monday and Wednesday, and then once between Thursday and Saturday. Um, and then whatever uh, conditioning stuff that, that Matt has for us. Um, so, yeah, so like I would say pretty quick into the season, it was like, all right, this is a good little routine we got going on. My body is responding well to it. Kind of had an idea. It was like, okay, if I ever felt, you know, a little sore here or there, it's like, all right, the plan for the next day is this. And then obviously, you know, communicating with uh, with Woody and everybody, um, Skip, just about like how you're feeling. Like I said, they've, they've been open and, and honest the whole time, and and, uh, and it's just been it was it was blending very nicely for everybody. I felt like. Yeah. So so it sounds like you do some sauna. Are there some cold plunge guys in there? You, yeah, we cold? have. Yeah, we the the fearsome foursome would hit the uh, <laughs> would hit the the hot tub before the game, and then maybe a little cold plunge dunk just to get our mm -hmm. our uh our body going but uh but yeah i've I, I have one just a little small portable one here at the house that i've been doing the off season i try to hit that in the sauna a couple times a week and yeah. um different recovery modalities stuff like that um people call me like a nerd with all the recovery stuff that i have they're like oh, it probably doesn't even work it's, i'm like you know what if it works a half a percent if it you know it helps me get a little bit better it, it'll be worth it in the long run so might as well uh, take advantage of it. Yeah, especially with you going through your history, you know, other people haven't experienced what you've gone through. So you uh, definitely taken some of those precautions. Um, yeah, now, getting into, sure. now getting into some questions from fans and then we'll wrap it up here. Um, first question, what are you working on this off season? You know, what areas, if any, um, are there areas to improve? And then is this insight from the Mariners or just kind of what you're going off of or what you used to? What yeah, so we... Yeah, we've had obviously our conversations, off-season plans and stuff like that. Um, yeah, having going through the year and, and kind of having the cutter be new this past year, uh, this off-season, it's kind of like, all right, let's just refine everything. Um, you know, keep up with the cutter, keep up with the changeup. So I, my kind of goal this off-season is to work on the changeup a little more. Obviously, I threw, I think you said, what, 7% changeups this past year. Mm -hmm. um, just making that more consistent. Um, and then same thing being consistent with, uh, the cutter. But I think for me, just overall, it's, it's, let's just refine everything and kind of get it to the point where I feel comfortable with throwing any pitch in any situation. Um, more years past, it's always been like, 
oh, like I have to go through rehab or something, <laughs> something like that, working uh, for strengthening and stuff like that. Where this off season is, is kind of nice. It's like, all right, we're not working on a new pitch. Um, we're kind of just refining things, trying to make little tweaks here and there, nothing like major. Um, but I think like every we've all been on the same page. It wasn't necessarily just the team or just myself. It's like, all right, we kind of bounce things back and forth. And like, hey, what do you think of this? Yep, let's do that and, and move forward. And there's a lot of communication um, from both sides and and how as things progress from, you know, bullpen standpoint. You know, we're trying to build up volume uh, to get ready for spring training so that when we come into camp, we can kind of hit the ground running. Absolutely. And then um, it looks like you and Cal led a youth camp in New York recently. So how yeah. was that experience and, and what's it like, or what's it mean to you to be able to give back to the community in that capacity? Yeah. So it's funny. Um, Cal's uncle, uh, he played minor league baseball and he owns a facility in Binghamton that I, I grew up in and I oh, wow. used to go to as a kid. Like I literally from, I don't know, fifth, sixth grade till I graduated uh, high school. I would, and I worked there when I was in college in the off seasons. So I've known Matt since I was very young, um, his uncle Matt. And uh, so, yeah, so he did a catching camp there last off season. And we got gotten talking about it during the season. And I was like, hey, it would kind of be cool. And maybe we do a pitching catching camp or something like that. Um, you know, kind of see, see what happens. And then, you know, once we got to the off season, we touched base and he was like, yeah, let's do it. And so we, we scheduled that and it was, yeah, it was the end of, uh, end of December, right before uh, New Year's. And it was awesome. It just, it was cool for me to, to go back to the facility. I was joking with Matt, his uncle. I was like, hey, nothing's changed in this place besides a couple pictures, like on the wall, on like some new turf, but I <laughs> still looked the same as when I came in in high school. Um, but no, so it was really cool for me to like, that's the place that I worked out at you know, four or five times a week, um, you know, working there, you know, a handful of times when I was in college and, uh, you know, having that relationship with, with him and um, being able to come in with Cal and, and kind of do a, a camp to to help the community, help the, the kids in the community kind of just learn a couple different things and, and be around them. It was, it was very surreal for me just to, to do that and, um, and to kind of give back and meet everybody that, uh, you know, in the area that, you know, I was, I was them going when I was younger. So it was, that was a cool experience. You know, I saw a handful of kids uh, that go to the high school I went to and uh, even like elementary school kids. So being able to meet them. And, um, but yeah, I think it was just two days. The first day I was hitting. I was like, you guys don't want to learn hitting from me. I'll leave that to Cal. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, but no, so it was, it was a cool experience. Just a kind of a kind of culmination of, of, of uh, everything coming together. That's awesome. And then, um, Kind of shifting topics. What's what's a favorite topic, or what are the favorite topics to chat about with the bullpen guys during games? Are there are there any common topics? Uh, yeah, I would say we're. It's usually like all right, something crazy that Sauce has experienced in his life. <laughs> Sauce is like the ringleader with like all these stories. It's it's hilarious. <laughs> Some of them we're like, all right, Sauce, it, that can't be a real story. I'm sure <laughs> that you've heard. Uh, I know that he has probably told the story a couple times when he got lost in Seattle. Yeah, I heard about that. It's like, like we still give him crap. Like, how do you get lost in the city that you grew up in? Like, how, yeah. <laughs> so, Ace Needle right yeah, so, just... <laughs> yeah, right. It's just you have that's the direction. Like, you just get to yeah. that point, then you can work off of that. But um, yeah, I think in the beginning, of this, in the beginning of uh, you know, the season, beginning of the games, it's like kind of more loose. You could probably you, know, you look down at the bullpen the first, second inning. Um, especially with our starters, it's like, all right, we can kind of be a little loose. <laughs> it's been nice to, you know, that those guys are going to gonna be battling there for five, six, seven plus innings. But um, so, yeah, so the first couple of innings kind of just general banter, just whatever, you know, somebody saw something on Twitter or Instagram and we kind of talk about it. And, um, obviously we're locked into the game. We're, we're, you know, engaged in what's going on. And then, just sauce just going off on, on some tangent and then the boy just, just getting them going. So, but yeah, then, like I said earlier, it's like, once we get to the fourth, fifth inning, it's like, all right, here we go. It's uh, we'll talk about sauce getting lost in, in uh, Seattle tomorrow. <laughs> we'll bring that back up. <laughs> That's awesome. I'm kind of working off of that. Who are the top three funniest guys on the team? Sauce for sure. Just, you never know what's going to, what's going to happen with sauce. Um, I'm going to put Bryce up there just because he's like, 
I, Bryce has this unique ability. The first time I met him in spring training, I was like, this guy seems just to like not care. Not, not that he doesn't care. I don't want it to come off like that because he does. Like he's yeah. unbelievable. But like he's so laid back that it's like, shouldn't this be a little more difficult like for you? <laughs> like, and like he got the the southern accent. He's coming in with a cowboy back, cowboy hat, cowboy boots. Um, you know, so I would put Bryce up there just from from uh, just a comical standpoint of uh, he's just so laid back. Um, I'm trying to think, we have a lot of guys that are just like kind of funny, just like Lucy Goosey. Obviously, Gino was funny in, oh, yeah. in uh, this year. Um, but yeah, I think I don't know. If I had to pick a third. Hmm. It's a tough one. Yeah, it's a tough one. I'll leave it at those two. The sauce, yeah, sauce sure. is like funny enough for all three spots. So. Right. <laughs> he takes up multiple spots for sure. Exactly. And then if you had to steal a pitch from any pitcher on the team, who would it be and what pitch? Oh, I would say any pitch of Brash. Um, <laughs> uh, let's see. I think, yeah, I think like Brash is slider. Like, I saw an interview that Brent Rooker did the other day. With, I think it was, might have been a pitching ninja. And he was like, yeah, I think it's just so gross. Because I mean, we watch it. And we see it, obviously, in catch play, uh, you know, before the game when he throws, like, a light bullpen. And like, that's so nasty. And then you look at it, like, on the iPad after, like, after he pitches in a game. It's like, that shouldn't – you shouldn't be able to do that with a baseball. <laughs> um, so I would say either – yeah, either Rash's slider. Logan's splitter is pretty nasty. Like, that would be kind of cool. Um, yeah, I think I would go with Brash's slider, though. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, he's throwing frisbees out there, and then you got to also defend 100 miles an hour. So Right. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, he's got a full repertoire. <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, Justin, that'll do it for this time. Really appreciate you coming on, sharing your story. Um, looking forward to seeing you progress even next year and seeing you out there. And myself and all of us Mariners fans, really appreciate your time. No, definitely. I appreciate it, Connor. Thank you.